So this is little for going to do a little short story because uh, I still have a lot more digging and it's a bit more complicated. We'll give you a long one, short, but it's just before I go to bed, I um, just had to get it out of my head. Okay, so most of you probably know that on April the 8th, there was going to be a solar eclipse. And you may have even read newspaper reports that are saying that the authorities are telling people to stock up because they feel that um, the, the, the um, power system may overload, which is, for me, an absolute first that's ever occurred. Uh, but there's a whole bunch of things occurring, which once you understand the propagation qualities, this is to do with signal strength up in the ionosphere, the suggestion of a blackout becomes a little bit more clearer and it gets a whole lot weirder. First thing is that um, when you have an eclipse, one of the things that actually happens to the eclipse is that the uh, propagation or the the, uh, the higher in the, the, in the upper atmosphere with the electromagnetic field um, is occurring, it gets uh, basically a lot weaker. So basically, things like radio communication signals, um, basically any form of transmissions. Uh, you know, aviation, GPS, they all become susceptible to being basically like a, basically like an EMF blackout. They're just gone. And so that's that's one. And that, that then you turn around and you sort of turn around and start, you look at the, uh, the eclipse is going to occur and it's going to take place uh, basically at the centre. The best place to see it is a place called Matland in Mexico. Now, Matalan in Mexico, Maltalan, Mal- Maltana, it's right on the, on the east coast, I'm not pronoun- probably pronounce it properly. Uh, it's going to be where the El Presidente and a whole bunch of VIPs are going to be at the uh, aquarium that's located in that place in the sea of, called the Sea of, Cote- sea of Cortez Qu- Aquarium. Now, the Sea of Cortez Qu- Aquarium, uh, aside from being based on, uh, inspired by the... Um, Man at the Crossroads, which is a very, very freaky, surreal painting uh, made by Mexican muralist Diego uh, Rivia, Rivia Diego, Mexican muralist, who also his art form or the genre is basically the inspiration of the Colorado, uh, the airport mural, which in my case, you know, I've looked at that situation and, and it's not like the guy who painted it was a member of the Illuminati. But I think once you understand the uh, the the nature of the Mexican murals and the inspiration Diego Rivia, plus more importantly that the brief that he was given, he was kind of like largely set up to do something there, which com- when combined with everything else, um, yeah, does have some, maybe does have some um, uh, symbolism. Now that's the loosest of all these things. And again, none of this I'm telling you today is designed to go, oh, this is what's going to happen or give you a crystal ball. Um, it's, I'm really reporting on a whole bunch of things that I think are really interesting. Because... Not long, just before last month, they last the uh, reconnaissance satellite from Wallops, Virginia, which is, we'll get back to that in a second, but Virginia Wallops is a basically where Rocket Lab actually launches, and this was a Rocket Lab rocket. Um, I can't remember the name of the rocket, it occurred to me, but the, the heraldry on it is very, very interesting because it includes a dragonfly, a pegasus, uh, a dragonfly, a pegasus, a yellow jacket hornet, a sunfish, and I think something must may just come into my mind, but those are the main ones. So the sunfish is basically very interesting because the aquarium is, that's effectively kind of what the Sea of Cortez Aquarium is actually associated with. And that's, the, again, the more vague one. The yellow jacket is to a uh, somewhat quite often associated with the new US military mission patch to do with the uh, heraldry of the um, electronic weapons. And again, remembering that the, uh, well, we have, we have no, we have to get ahead of ourselves, uh, the and the and the, then you get the dragonfly. And that one took me a long while until I started to actually look into what was going on. I went, well, dragonfly, and then I came across the dragonfly galaxy or no, dragonfly, dragonfly forty four, which is a, a galaxy which is comprised of ninety nine point nine percent black matter. Uh, that's sort of out there towards the Pegasus constellation, which again is the other big mission statement on the um, uh, rocket lab that was launched. And the area where the best place to actually be turned around and actually see the occult, or the, uh, the sorry, the eclipse, the solar eclipse, is going to be as it over Mexico in an area of the space which is the Pegasus uh, constellation. Now, at the same time this is happening, we're also having a, a meteorite actually come in. And guess where the best place in the world to be seeing that, which will also be occurring on April the 8th? You got it, Matlin in good old-fashioned Mexico. Now, 
you then then you go and actually have a look and go look at my Facebook page for the actual um, name of the city because I know I'm not pronouncing it, but it's right there, right there on the east coast. But the heraldry of that, which is in this in the Sinola, which is you know with the famous drug cartel that's very 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 famous for its silver and gold mines, um, which interesting, very, you know, in electromagnetic connotations. But more importantly, the heraldry of it is two mermaids. Uh, it's a basically on a on a planet which has been the grips of a solar uh, solar eclipse, and then a one of the mermaids is holding a, a twinned horn devil. Now, when you look at that twin horn devil, which is actually now stopped, is now burning green, and it's, there's they've also looked at it and they're finding that there's a shadow on it and there's a swirl inside it. And with my you might have there's been a few volcanoes going on. Well, it turns out, they had a look, there's actually a scenario out there, which is one of the things which they, 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 they believe can cause an extinction event, is actually a comet coming in that has actually got, for want of a better word, black mat, black dark matter actually uh, attached in, in it. This can actually trigger off volcanic activities, and this can actually figure off an extinction-level event. Happens apparently every 300 million years. And so it's really funny because at the same time, what's also happening on April the 8th is they are launching a CERN experiment. And the CERN experiment is called ALICE. And the ALICE will be basically uh, firing a nuclei of, basically, of, it's, it's, it's an experiment into, into dark matter. And at the same time that they're doing that, they're launching another bunch of rockets, which will be fired into the moon. And these moons are basically sounding rockets which effectively are there, there to detect black dark matter. So Artemis, black dark matter, Alice, dark matter, the twin-horned devil comet uh, effectively looks like it's got the symptoms of having dark matter, which we've, as I explained, has been actually recognised as being causing potential to have an extinction-level event. And it's coming from a segment in the constellation part from between the Pegasus, Pisces and... and um, the crab, I want to say, yeah, cancer, but in an area which basically all links back to our good old friend Dragonfly 44. All of this points to being the the a great interest in to black matter, uh, sorry, into dark matter. Now, the other thing about this is that the nationalists turn around and asking all the people to keep a really, really close eye on the sky and, and look out for strange symptoms in, in um, electromagnetic, you know, like basically a gigantic aurora borealis and keep an eye on animals, which, they, you know, they're saying all the animals could be actually very strange, which is like, sorry, WTF? What the f***? I'm not. I'm not making any of this up. You know. Um, now, once you think that's weird enough, go and actually have a look at what happened in nineteen in nineteen ninety when a comet occurred and it basically left everyone absolutely speechless because basically it looked like they were looking into a parallel universe. Now, the last time anything we talked about parallel universes was when there was a dark matter a neutrino, which went straight through the centre of uh, Antarctica South Pole. And that's actually Scott Edmondson. When you look at the location of this, you will find that there was a miniature mini CERN there, and it was carrying a dark matter experiment. And this is where a whole bunch of people went, "What the hell's going on here?" Um, all sorts of very strange things, you know, made, made, uh, statements were made. But we do know that people like Buzz Aldrin were down there. They were um, very high level, deep um, uh, orthodox. There was, you know, virtually all the VIPs were wandering down there. And they all came back apparently looking, you know, quite like, "What the bloody hell is going on here?" So, and I said that that's also interesting because there's been a lot of you know disclosure disclosures have been like trying to suggest that the um, uh, the little well, let's call it the mini soon down there was you know that's responsible for the, all the earthquakes and all that. that's yeah that's I think I think that's that's thrown out as a bone. Uh, main thing is this I mean I'm not saying that's not unrelated because as we're saying we we understand the dark matters are actually enough to trigger a volcanic activity as they basically destabilize our own uh, matter matter you know our planet is made up of matter and matter and matter and matter and antimatter when they come together or dark matter never a good thing um so these are the events that we're looking at uh i i, I am not making any conclusions or saying anything about one thing i'm just pointing out the fact that on april 8th we are going to be having a solar eclipse uh which they are carrying out experiments into propagation 
Previously, they just launched our rocket, which is all the all the, the um, mission the mission patch, all the heraldry, and all this her- heraldry has a specific formula. You know, it's not just something you squint your eyes at. Once you actually start to understand it, it's like you know, sort of a formula, time, place, and um, which, in fact, I think one of the uh, the events on the, what kind of Leamington was their old. Um, when I felt lost, I mentioned was it basically gave a symbolism to kind of oh the fish that's right they were, were the fish because of course the fish isn't just the Sea of Cortez it's to do with the Easter uh, the the period of basically you know where the whole idea of Jesus Christ went and came back and shall you know um, resurrected not biblical I'm just saying that gave me a, the, all these things a set and location each each mission patch has a particular forma so we basically have a CERN experiment we have rockets being fired into the moon. We have uh, a solar eclipse where they will be actually carrying out experiments to basically look for dark matter, and all of the stuff which is just all just. I mean, we're not we're talking we're not talking chump change. We're talking about a serious amount of money, uh, plus the fact that they've actually already put out a warning to the public, saying to the people in the United States in this area of like this where this eclipse is going to go over. Um, yeah, stock up in food, and it's also interesting. Interesting. One other thing about these sort of things is that. All these symbols, uh, when you look at them, like you know, so I, I was looking at this um, this thing about the eclipse, and it's to do with you know this, this, the the all the crossroads of the man, the, the going back to the Rockefeller. It's like all of it boils back to this this thing again of this the 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 snake versus the serpent, and this is of course the the, the national emblem of Mexico. But it's also appears the same story occurs in the Nordic story. It occurs in the uh, Sumerian texts. It basically this this story of this snake versus eagle element, which again talks about polarization, being at the crossroads. Uh, basically, sort of when the mask gets dropped down, we get to see what the, what we're really like in this parallel universe. It's just amazing what you what. Uh, Freud would describe as a rubris or, or basically a symbolism that which occurs again and again and again and it's it's something to do with our basically a psyche kind of recognising that this is the alarm bell and it sort of becomes it's like you know like we, we're scared of snakes because in our reptilian and well not our reptilian but our mind this is something that's just you know a danger so it's even hardwired and even if you're a snake you see a snake there's a little like Arr! And this is so. Well, this is the symbolism has, has just occurred again and again. So, you know, even when you talk about the whole, you know, the Colorado Airport, and, and they talk about the lizard reptilian people. I mean, I don't really believe they're lizard reptilian people, but I do believe in that there was a symbolism, which is talking about basically the dropping of the masks, so that you actually see the pe- the real, what people are really actually like. So anyway, that's that's. We'll leave it at that. Uh, I I have no explanation. I'm 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 very fascinated because I, I've. Probably thirty years. I have never seen anything this weird. And I said, you know, go and have, have a look at the uh, the situation of the eclipse that occurred in nineteen nineteen. Uh, in terms of being able to people look up and to see this, uh, what was described. Key word here: described. Not saying it is, but described as a parallel universe, which again fits very very close with, with what we've seen with the uh, neutrino experiments down in Antarctica, where they talked about a parallel universe. And they said then it, then, it, then it wasn't. Then it was. And then and then the story just completely fucking dropped out. But the point of the matter is that when we're looking at uh, the fact that this is also taking place when soon it's been taking place and the experiments are specifically about uh, dark matter as the side of the ones on the moon at the same time that we know that the because of this, you know, the, the experiment, the, the, the eclipse actually effectively um, has an effect on the propagation ability, which effectively has an interaction between the sort of realm between matter and anti- antimatter. So... Um, yeah, happy Easter. Uh, and again, that's, I guess, the whole sort of, um, it takes you back into the whole sort of pagan element too. But anyway, we'll leave it at that. Uh, and um, yes, April 8th could be proved to be a very strange point in our time. And um, if it isn't strange enough already.